Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be talking about altcoins, specifically whether now is actually a fantastic time to be dollar cost averaging buying back into those altcoins or whether or not we should actually wait a little bit longer to see if we can get better deals. As we get into this video if you find it useful and informative hit the like button, I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, links in the description down below fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there so why not go ahead and check it out today if you're looking for a little bit more from the crypto space then why not check out the patreon services we cover things like such as bear market strategies bull run strategies and uh you know things like project reviews and trading as well so if that's your bag check that out in the description below okay with all that said done out of the way let's uh let's jump on down into into the world of crypto right let's see if these altcoins are actually where they need to be and um, so we can actually you know start scooping up some fantastic deals and um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here uh, at bitcoin as you can see we are in some kind of uh structure to the upside i have this approximately 33,900. however i do think this is less likely to actually occur i think if anything we're probably more likely going to see some kind of double top scenario just up here about thirty-one thousand and eighty-three dollars right um, i think that's probably where we're going to find this kind of Vessel. So I am kind of hopeful for the, the 33,900 range. I just don't think that's actually probable um, at this point in time. So we're not going to keep an eye on that, right? So uh, essentially what I think is going to happen, we're going to get a double top. This is actually a fourth wave. If I actually pull this up into a four hourly chart here, you can see that we're in some kind of fourth wave going up, right? And uh, we'll be looking to pull back down. Now, some reason that's duplicated down. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete that one. But basically we are looking to come down into this low range. This low range actually takes us down to 22,900. Okay. As per my bitcoin video this morning so uh, we're starting with bitcoin because bitcoin's kind of leading the pack right and this is essentially going to take us up into uh, where these altcoins are right now okay so i'm going to take a, a look at several altcoins in brief detail um but enough detail that will give you a good idea as to kind of what's going on overall okay so um just to be aware that bitcoin's looking to push up and then we'll look for bitcoin to collapse on down towards the twenty-two thousand uh, dollar range twenty two thousand nine hundred approximately okay um so let's go ahead and take a look at the very first altcoin right so the first one i want to talk about is cardano i talked about this briefly yesterday not you know not necessarily from a technical and analysis perspective but more from uh, the point of view that cardano has got a lot of fundamental things that are happening and changing uh, in due course right now i was expecting this to kind of come down ever so slightly lower approximately the 47.8 uh, and 85 here and then look to kind of move on up we actually got that reversal a little bit earlier uh, i think this low actually came in uh, just down here at 48.9 okay so we can go ahead and move our fib just up a little bit and then adjust our higher end target there for cardano so a little bit more um but again, you know, we want to be very aware of those double top scenarios. So as I make this a little bit bigger, uh, we can actually take a look at this chart in a little bit more detail here, right? So if I actually also remove that, we can also get a much bigger, big, bigger picture, right? So for Cardano, if I were to go ahead and just put this up here at, uh, what is I said, nine. So I just pull that down a couple of points there um, and then go ahead and just pull this on as well and just move that up a couple. So that's kind of the low point. Now we're obviously tracking that higher rave there, but we should be very aware that there's going to be a bit of resistance here and we could again create a double top scenario. We can see that the stochastic RSI on this hourly chart is approaching the overbought area in a pretty significant way um, on the four hourly. On the hourly, it's already there. The eight hourly is already there. The daily doesn't matter so much. I'm expecting this to kind of pull back down um, but on these smaller time frames i'm thinking we are likely to see another pullback of significance right it's going to be a little bit drop uh, drop down a little bit more um, and on the bigger scale of this thing we can kind of see that we are still tracking down potentially towards 30 cents so we might find that this actually does pull back down pretty significantly here and this is just a bit of a bounce uh, to the upside before we continue this motion uh, going down ever so slightly lower now obviously uh, as per yesterday's video we were talking about cardano and we're talking about you know the whales that have been buying the dip specifically the 40 cent range uh, there's multiple i think it was over a thousand transactions of over one hundred thousand uh, dollars in each transaction and essentially that's been that we've got some pretty good solid uh, foundation right down here on this 786 level so um you know it's possible that we come down to, to uh, 0.3 it's also possible that we come down lower than that afterwards but essentially from the, the all-time high up here uh, all the way down this is actually a pretty common area that we should be thinking about 30 cent as the kind of true bottom now what does that mean well it means that we've actually got pretty good discounts here on Cardano already. 
Okay, so uh, if we take a look at this and we can think about, you know, we pulled down to 40 cent here, it's an 87% drop. If we do go down to, to 30 cent, we are talking about a 90% drop, right? So I do think that Cardano is in a real good spot, uh, obviously for accumulation. Now, obviously we bought Cardano super, super early and much, much cheaper. Um, but, you know, again, these are very similar areas where we were looking at retracements of similar kind of percentage drops, right? Um, so when it comes to finding, you know, altcoins that are undervalued at a 90% discount, this would make a lot of sense to me personally i think there's a lot of dollar cost averaging to be done anywhere between 40 and 30 cent uh, but you know ultimately we could come down to 21 17 as i said yesterday and um, but i think that's less and less likely the lower this goes the lower the probability is that you're going to stay down there for any significant period of time and they're actually going to hit these levels and then kind of bounce off from them as significant buying pressure is going to be met and um, so really just want to focus in on really paying attention to some of these low areas and, and you know basically looking to do to dollar cost average and accumulate um, altcoins when they are in these really sweet spots i've often said on many of the videos if we're lower than 80 percent of the all-time high to me that seems like a pretty good place for most retail investors to dollar cost average just slowly as and when you can lower uh, basically just continue to buy in slowly as that price pulls back down and you'll end up with a really good low average price purchase for your altcoins obviously i'm not a financial advisor i can't give you financial advice or anything like that um, but in the case of cardano here you know i'm not expecting anything too much more major to the downside but again fantastic opportunities if it does and um, if it does pull down those into those significant lows as i mentioned yesterday then essentially you know we have got some potential here to accumulate so we are still thinking about pulling back down um with cardano now obviously the the area that i'm most cautious on and considering the stochastic rsi is right up here at this upper end it is also possible that we actually come back down and set a double bottom before actually going back up again and i think that might come in the future and we just want to be a little bit cautious on it i think um for now though with knowing the structure that we've kind of got going on here and we want to be really aware of 60.9 i think that's going to be a major bit of resistance for us to try to push on through not only is it the top of our a wave but it's also a bit of resistance previously over here the side as well and um, so it was support it's term broken and basically became resistant so be a little bit cautious on this one it's also possible that i have a different wave count and um, you could take a look at it as a big a coming down here this is a b and we're going to come down lower before we potentially have that swing to the upside there's still potential downside here and um, so we should be very much open to the idea that things on Cardano are going to change um, and they're going to change quite a bit and um, so on that note let's go ahead and take a look at the second altcoin now i've covered this one uh, in our Discord server this morning, but basically we want to take a look here at uh, Harmony One, right? So Harmony One, very similar. Now, we've got a slightly different structure and a different pattern for Harmony One than we do have on many of the other altcoins. So if I make this a little bit bigger, um, we can actually get into this, right? So here we are seeing a fourth wave with a fifth wave coming down lower. This fourth wave up, however, is a structure of five waves coming up here, specifically on our hourly chart. If we actually just do ahead and bring this down into our hourly here for Harmony, you can see that we've gone one, two, three, four, and five. Then we've got the ABC structure, and we're looking for five waves to come up towards possibly 73 uh, sorry 7.318 okay but again we've got the stochastic rsi it's going to be bouncing around a little bit um, and there's no guarantee of anything in this space so we should be super cautious um, as always if bitcoin does descend, decide to just reverse on us instantaneously uh, then i would be looking out for the double tops just as i said with cardano right so um, if we take a look at that we are talking about moving maybe to 5.3 four six and then getting rejected and then moving on down the hourly stochastic rsi here is of course heading up into the overbought area so i think there's a good chance we're going to hit that level and um, the four hourly is already overbought the eight hourly is overbought and the daily has actually progressed a little bit more than i would have liked it to and um, so we should be thinking about some kind of pullback with that as well the weekly is okay and the monthly is okay. I'm not concerned over those. Um, but essentially, we should be thinking, uh, you know, there was the potential and there still is the potential that we just, you know, continue to run until the daily is overbought. Um, which is always a possibility right we can always run um until that daily chart is you know stochastic rsi is actually into the overbought area and we keep the hourly the volatility it goes up and down we can keep the four hour and maybe even the eight hour in the overbought areas for a little bit longer and it wouldn't be unheard of it has happened before numerous times um so we could be seeing something like that we could still hit these high points and these high targets um but really it does depend on what bitcoin does if bitcoin decides to pull back tomorrow for example uh, then essentially you're going to see many of these altcoins also pull back okay in a pretty big way as well and um, so as we start to think about you know uh, as i was talking about earlier right what about those percentage drops well um, for harmony one right now we came down as low as this line uh, this is a 91 percent drop right so at the current price 
is about 86%. It's below that 80% threshold that I was talking about. Um, and essentially, you know, it was down as low as 91%. Um, so significant reductions have been made here for Harmony One. Um, and again, I think that's a fantastic opportunity to get back into it if you're out of it, or if you're just looking to accumulate more, these are the areas that I want to really be focusing in on. Now, this is a slightly deeper wave, and I think it's actually ending in a five wave move. Um, and again, this actually is not necessarily an ABC structure here, but actually we end up with a three, 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 five inside this final C wave over here, for example. Okay, um, I think that's probably the most probable kind of scenario that's going on here. Alternatively, we could look at this as a bigger pullback and a very significant one that takes harmony significantly lower. It's also possible that if we were to chalk this up as some kind of one, two, three, some kind of four, and then five. However, you do not have a really good structure up here to allow for that. Okay, so I don't think that's exactly what's going on. I think it's actually more of a three, three, five scenario, um, and I think uh, you could actually take a look at it from uh, this perspective, where we have this as coming down here uh, with a wave one, wave two, wave three. This is a wave four, then we come into a wave five. Okay, so you end up with the five wave move here, uh, although a really uh, overextended kind of fifth wave, uh, and then of course we pull back down into the five waves. This side we bounce up for four, we come back down for five. It's possible that you have those kind of lows come on in when. It it comes to harmony one so just kind of keep an eye on there are some other options here that could see this come down significantly lower if i actually grab hold of this price range here and um, you can see this potentially coming down into those kind of uh, one to two cent range um but again i don't there's no guarantee of any of this it, it really does depend on bitcoin i see bitcoin bottoming out at about 22 to twenty three thousand dollars, and therefore i'm not expecting a massive amount more downside from many of these altcoins and um, so when we get into sub 90 percent pullbacks that to me just says you know we shouldn't really be trying to finesse more um, because long term, uh, ultimately, the, these altcoins are going to perform incredibly well. So we want to make sure that we are you know, securing positions sub 90%. Okay, so we want a dollar cost average, anything below 80, as I was saying, right? And if the price does drop down 90% from all time high, then if you're not dollar cost averaging, then you probably need to review that strategy, in my opinion. Okay, as I said, I'm not a financial advisor, can't give you financial advice. But when you're sub 90% um, from all time high, this is exactly where you want to be dollar cost averaging into projects that you think are going to be around in the next run up okay not all projects are going to survive this particular pullback right and even the biggest can fail just take a look at luna for example okay so let's take a look at the next one right so we've gone through ada we've gone through harmony one let's jump down into matic now okay so matic has been pulling back in a pretty significant way as well uh, you can see here on this daily chart it's really taken a bit of a bit of a, a bit of a significant kind of pullback and we can take a look at this in multiple ways again um, but it does look like we are in some kind of 335 structure just over here, uh, inside here. Okay, so um, it's not a five wave structure because we don't have a good quality five wave coming down. If that's the fourth wave, it crosses wave one, for example. So if I make this a little bit bigger, we can get a bigger kind of uh, perspective on this from a daily perspective. Okay, so we have this kind of move down, we have this move up, and then we're pulling back down over here. Okay, so this entire thing could be corrective in its nature, uh, and we would, could potentially argue that it's a big um, five-wave move, right? So we have this kind of thing coming down here. This has to be our uh, first wave, this would have to be our second wave, and this would have to be third, fourth, and then fifth. So it's possible that we still come down lower, and again, that's pretty much aligned to my thinking already. So if we go ahead and grab our percentage point of view, take it from the high point take it to the low of where we are this is an 82 percent pullback um, so again depending on where that fourth wave goes would depend where uh, would kind of give us the target for our fifth wave um, and as a result of that that will give us a, a bigger kind of reduction in terms of price so if we're not starting to dollar cost average into matic i think we probably should and um, but i do expect more downside ultimately for for matic in the coming kind of days okay but i'm not expecting significant pullbacks um you know more than we've already seen uh, but you could potentially get a better rate on matic you know we went down as low as what's that 55 let me just check uh the low was 50 sorry 0.1 um so 50.1 uh, cent and uh, we could potentially come down a little bit lower but we don't know necessarily how low that's going to go so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the hourly chart here and we're just going to kind of review what the structure is going on here so we can make sense of these moves right uh, it's very important that we kind of take stock of the situation so that we can you know be best informed over what is going on whether or not we want to exit out of our positions and buy back and accumulate more or whether or not we just want a dollar cost average better positions overall right so um, let's jump into this on a bigger view right so we can see here we've got this kind of uh, bigger kind of wave three coming down um, and we want to do is we want to track you see you know how this kind of move up this so, so here we have a pretty standard 
uh, kind of corrective pattern just in there. I'm just going to mark that up there. And we're kind of tracking something similar here. Now, it's possible that actually this kind of pulls back a little bit. Let's just take a look at the stochastic. It's got a little bit of room to grow. We might end up with a double top here or some kind of sideways trade in. The fourth waves tend to be a little bit more complicated if, of course, this one is overly simple, which it does look to be pretty simple. So um, we should be thinking there is some kind of macro play that might be something like this. Um, and in that regard, we would be, if I can grab that high, where are you? Oh, I know you're there somewhere. There we go. Uh, and then we pull that here. We go ahead to the recent low right there. That would indicate that we should push up to about 92. Um, but again, I would be super cautious based on that stochastic RSI uh, of some kind of rejection just around this previous high point. Okay. Um, so if I were to go ahead and throw that on, I would say that, yeah, right up here about that 50% level there um, it would be about 75.3 cent. An interesting point to really start to think about some kind of progression, uh, maybe to the, uh, the downside. Now, alternatively, of course, my wave counter, this B wave might not be done. Um, so if we were to remove the uh, fib there, uh, we could look at this and say maybe our B wave actually has to come on down here a little bit lower before we can get that progression to the upside. So there's a couple of different things here. If the B wave is done, then we're talking about 75.3. Uh, sorry, we're talking about moving up uh, towards that 92 cent range. Uh, if it's not done though, however, we should actually be looking at a little bit more to the downside. Uh, and right now, the stochastic RSI on the hourly chart was telling me that we're more than likely going to see downside. Uh, the four hourly is also there. The eight hourly is already up there. And the daily is progressing up from the oversold so it's not overly too problematic slightly longer term and um, so essentially we are thinking about some micro movements here it can go in both directions a little bit of a hard read um, so just watch out for that it can go um, in both directions but essentially i think the macro here has to complete uh, whether or not that is up there at 92 cent or is it it's just going to be above this a wave or whatever so um, just watch out for that uh, essentially it could be some kind of um, a bear flag as well and uh, normally these are increasing um, to the upside so if I were to draw these on you would essentially have uh, a couple of lines just like so um, and basically you'd kind of bounce around evenly inside there your pole coming down your flag the breakdown from this continuation pattern okay so just kind of keep an eye out on these things um, but essentially I would expect Matic to come back down afterwards uh, and again we'll finish that kind of fifth, fifth wave coming down um, and you should be getting some pretty good discounts on that right so until the fourth wave is complete we don't know where that fifth wave is going to go um, but essentially i think there's going to be some fantastic opportunities on matic um once this corrective move of wave four is done okay it's not a pump we are not the bottom is not in as far as i'm concerned here uh, we have got more room to go down okay let's take a look at another one so agix uh, so agix for those who are unfamiliar it's a micro cap coin and um, launching on um the cardano ecosystem after migrating from the ethereum ecosystem We're all about artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence, uh, hence AGI. Um, and obviously X is the new contract and all of that kind of stuff. So um, it's a really interesting project, but it has obviously seen a lot of downside recently. If I pull this up into our uh, daily time frame, we can, of course, take a look at this from uh, the perspective that we are in some kind of really big kind of pullback. Now, the issue that we have here is we haven't got a lot of information because it's a new contract since the migration from um, AGI token to AGIX token. Um, and as a result of that, you know, it's really, really tough to see. Now, from the all-time high of the new contract, uh, we can see 91.7% decrease, right? So straight away, we're right in the right territory to be thinking significant reductions. Now, it's possible that we do come down on a one-to-one -one ratio. That would take us down to about 2.3 cent. Now, if it does pull back that low, I mean, I am going to be stacking up massive amounts of AGIX. Now, I don't think that it's going to go that low personally, okay? Um, it's just a common area on the one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, but if it does, I, I will seriously be buying up. As I said earlier, anything below 90%, we should be dollar cost averaging, in my opinion. Um, so that's kind of where we are, right? So let's go ahead and um, actually bring us up into our hourly chart, right? So we have a bit of an understanding here that we are in some kind of downward spiral, okay? We've got big kind of corrective moves. Now, we can obviously see that there's a huge pullback here. And what we want to do is we want to map out where we think things are likely to go. Um, so I'm expecting some kind of surge up, and then I'm expecting a bit more of a pullback down now. If we take a look at this, um, we haven't really got a good five wave structure at the beginning. Uh, this is actually pretty much just a three wave structure here and a three, uh, a really complicated, but I would just easily say it's a three wave structure. 
okay keep it quite simple uh, and it's really at um this point here that we really start to see um some kind of small wave one some kind of uh, corrective wave two and then a big pullback here in wave three okay um and we could look at this as i know people would probably want to say it's really simple to kind of go one two three four five and it, it super is uh, easy to do that however it's not really accurate um instead what i would say is you've probably got something more like this going on uh, and then you pull back down and it's an overextended third wave and um, much much more significant than what you saw previously and what's actually leading up to this is actually a 335 and um, corrective play altogether so i think after this fifth wave low um, i would expect the market to reverse and you know we don't necessarily know how low this is going to go it really depends on how high the fourth wave goes the higher wave four goes the lower wave five goes um essentially now it's also possible that this is incorrect and, and basically elliott wave theory doesn't work overly well for micro cap coins so we should be super concerned uh, over these kind of things but essentially um i would be very optimistic to think that we've got some pretty good opportunities for um agix in the very near future um, and if we have got positions in agix that we're looking to sell and potentially accumulate uh, accumulate back later uh, then of course you know we want to be paying attention to this fourth wave in a little bit more detail and um, so as i come back in here and we just zoom this back up what we want to do is we want to take a look at the significance of this right it's not in an impulsive structure it's actually just corrective structures altogether and it's pretty clear that we can say that this entire move up here is a single wave this is a single wave and therefore we should be thinking about push up you can see that this is pushing up right now and the stochastic rsi is moving up quite nicely on our hourly chart the four hourly charts already overbought the eight hourly chart is already overbought the daily has a little bit of regression to go okay so we're looking at some kind of push up then we're looking for some kind of collapse down um, and if we go ahead and just show you the, the most common areas although this is not going to be 100 accurate with these micro cap coins uh, it'll give you a bit of an idea as to where we could potentially be going and that would be 7.42 six okay so if i grab myself a price label here and i go ahead and throw that on there um four to six okay it's right in there and all i do is i also just grab a horizontal line there um, and just throw that in okay then we'll just remove our fib okay cool so if that is the case and we do move up that high then of course we'll have the ability to say that we can come back down now that we're coming back down and uh, we have a zone okay so there's a common areas um for fifth wave retracements okay they basically are 1.236 uh, to 1.618 of the fourth wave retracement okay um, it goes in both directions by the way so it doesn't really matter too much uh if you're going in an upward trend or downward trend um but essentially we are talking about 5.126 i'll just go ahead and mark that right there and then obviously we go down to that lower spectrum here uh, which comes in at 4.570 okay so those are going to be the accumulation zones uh, for this final fifth wave going down lower now it's possible that you overextend that with alternative counts um, but considering the fact that this is an overextended wave uh, the most common might actually just be that we actually end up going for a one-to-one -one ratio with wave one um, and if we would have to take it from that high point there down to the low point which i think is a little bit lower than that where is it there okay so you could potentially be looking at just coming down ever so slightly lower uh, on that fifth wave ever so slightly it would pretty much be uh, almost uh, you know, in line with our third wave low point so again you know lots of different ways of looking at it i do think though we'll have to monitor the waves as they come on down the sub wave counts are usually more important than the macro uh, fibonacci levels right they will always take precedence over uh, the uh, macro view here so for for agix that's kind of what i'm looking at i'm looking at a potential move up to about 7.4 426 and then a potential move down to about 5.126 okay so pretty significant there um if we were to take a, a look at the price um level uh, we'll be talking about a 31 percent uh drop from about uh 7.4 to about 5.1 okay so then let's get into the another one um it's kind of getting it on with this video now we're going going 23 minutes i'll try to keep this as simple as i can for us um but agix has a, a bit of a brother or a sister depending on how you want to look at it uh, which is s down now s down is all about your dyna sets your DeFi. um but using artificial intelligence okay um, and we can see we've got a pretty clear drop coming down here it's uh, it's pretty sharp um, and there's lots of different ways of looking at it we were actually tracking this as a completing a five wave move upwards and um, but having a five wave move right here is very confusing it wouldn't make sense to have five waves randomly placed um so i'm not quite sure what's gone on here uh, right in this upper end but essentially it, it is a five wave move if we were to look at it from a certain perspective and um, from this low range all the way up to the the upper end there so 
Um, I'm not going to count it as that. Um, and I think uh, there's lots of other ways we might have to kind of chalk it up. Uh, and it could be that actually we're in some kind of expanding flat correction. And over here we have our five wave kind of move coming on down lower. And I still expect uh, potentially some more downward action here. Um, and I do think that we have some kind of, if I were to go ahead and... Um, grab this for example we would have that as some kind of w that's some kind of x and all of this as some kind of y um, and of course you know the expanding flat should end in five waves so uh, that could be what we're looking at here on this entire corrective play um, from the high point of about 182 down to about uh, 65 cent back up to 196 and then down again into these low ranges and um, once this is done i would expect reversal though so we take a look at the stochastic rsi here uh, on the hourly chart and just zoom in a fraction and make this a little bit bigger uh, you can of course see we've got a little bit more room to grow here and um, so we've got to push up to the upside a little bit more and um, i am expecting this to kind of finish out up there uh, um you know we're taking a look at it it's, it's an odd wave count and again you know with elliott wave theory on these micro cap coins it's really really difficult uh, there's just not enough liquidity and um, but but if we were to take a look at this we can obviously see here uh, we have the potential to push maybe up to about 98 cent but i think that's incredibly unlikely uh, i would be focusing in on potential for double tops coming in around 80 cent uh, and then getting kind of rejected from there um, i'll be really uh, surprised if it goes up any higher but again it could and um, so we should be you know open to the idea and the possibilities of there this is a, a some kind of zigzag right we go with one two three, four, and five. Uh, then we have some kind of ABC structure, A, B with the triangle in the middle come down into C. And then we look for that final kind of five wave structure coming on up here. Um, taking us into those higher zones okay so very very possible um so we'll put it out there but we do want to watch out to see where these rejection points also come on in um, and once that is done and let's hypothetically say that we do go as high as that um you know 98 cent let me find this end point wherever it is come on there we go there we go okay and if i run that all the way to the upper end there you can of course acknowledge that the low points for the fifth wave low uh, would come down very very significantly um, and we'll just go ahead and draw these on which would be right in here. And I'll just mark these up, right? The low point right at the very bottom is 44.14. And then at the higher end, we would basically be looking at 53.4 zero okay so basically that's the kind of the zone that we're looking for now if we were to see such a significant drop like that um we would be going again from that high point down into that that was taken at the, the beginning level there's about 45 percent drop so you could earn a decent amount if you're looking to exit out of s down and accumulate back up again um, at those kind of levels now essentially if we actually um bring this up into our daily just pull this all the way down from all-time high on the s dow contract uh, if we go ahead and just grab that all the way down to our uh, you know, theoretical lows, then we are talking about 91%, um, you know, drop, right? It's a very, very significant drop here for SDAO. And again, it's very much aligned to the rest of the crypto space. There's nothing unusual about that. Um, the recent lows do actually put this at a little bit more of a conservative 90%. So again, right in that sweet spot for dollar cost averaging, as I was talking about. Right now, the price is trading at 87% from the previous all-time high. So again, doing any form of dollar cost averaging around here, personally, I feel is absolutely fine. And um, because long-term, it doesn't really matter too much, um, essentially, as long as you pick the projects that have longevity to them. And um, so guys, I'm going to leave the video there. If you have found this useful and informative hit the like button i really do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto with all that said done and out of the way i hope everyone has a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one